Funding now on Indiegogo, it's Shadowbinders, our second chance offer to get two hardcovers of our classic webcomic delivered to your door. Steampunk, fantasy, and romantic comedy from Clownfish Comics. Go to Indiegogo, check out the link in the description below. Now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And as if on cue, the media is firing up the hip pieces for fans of the Snyder Cut. Right. Actually, yesterday I pointed this out to you. Yes. Because I guess the embargo was lifted on, you know, Snyder Cut, Justice League mm. Snyder Cut. Um, you know, it, reviews, it was apparently lifted. And so the reviews started to hit Rotten Tomatoes. And it was interesting to me. Now, this isn't all of them. But there was an interesting pattern that you'd see. You noticed that um, a lot of a lot of the critics that were giving it rotten reviews are also the people that have been out there screaming about their 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 uh, you know narrative that toxic fans won and 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 they just see this you know the same people that you would expect. Now there are there are a lot of people who have shouted out about toxic fans that actually reviewed it and gave it a good review. And we can't say that their review is wrong just because you know they they didn't like it and we're you know they're we're mad about the toxic fan comments because we haven't seen it yet. But it is interesting that the same people that keep screaming about toxic fans winning and how it's wrong are also the same people giving it negative reviews. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that because this this one, they've been waiting. They've been waiting to get their meat hooks into the fandom. Now, again, we can't speak to whether or not the movie's gonna be any good. I, I guess my thought process is, could it be any worse? Because the original Justice League was boring AF, I thought it was not terribly good. Um, if it's four hours of that, I'm not sure how it's going to Well, it go. depends who you ask, but I want to point something out real quick here before you go there. Like, look at who has rotten up. Time Out, which I don't really familiar with. Uh, Little White Lies. Well, they're pretty good at telling lies. Den of Geek. Den of um, Geek. Then we had, like, you know, uh, Polygon, uh, The Observer, Fanboy Nation, Up Rocks. Yep. Um, you know, New York Times, uh, LA Times. Mashable. Mashable. Well, Mashable gave it a good oh, one. Oh, Mashable did um, it. Then they have on here, like, you know, Decider, The Rap, Collider, IndieWire, Radio Times, etc. So the, the typical people that usually have, you know, that from. Um, and then you go here and you can see, you know, Collider. Cyber yep. cut review a long the longer justice like not a better one and stuff like that. And you can see articles if you search by individual sites, you can find hit pieces they've done on this toxic fan narrative. Yeah, and, and it wasn't just the Snyder Cuts. Basically, anytime there is pushback against the media and the critics, uh, all of a sudden you get called, you know. Uh, alt-right mm -hmm. entitled you get called names there have been many battlegrounds uh you know waged wars waged uh for fandoms uh sonic the hedgehog was one alita was one we'll talk a little more about those later but right now it's about the cider cut and what these outlets are afraid of and we pointed this out before is they're afraid they're going to be cut out as the middle men and women yeah and other tastemakers telling you what to think yeah, they're afraid that the fans are going to be able to directly influence the studios and that, God forbid, money is going to talk again. Well, that's their job to influence the studios, not yours. It is. It is. And I think, uh, you know, Warner Brothers in particular has been on the receiving end of a lot of this uh, cancel culture bullshit. We saw it with Joker. You know, that they were trying to tell people not to go see Joker. And what happened was Joker wound up blowing up over a million or billion dollars at the box office. Uh, because a lot of people did it just to, you know, give the finger to the media because they're so right. disgusted by the media. Right. And that's what that's, I think, is tying in directly. You're seeing these people, the same people that are giving it negative reviews or writing these hit pieces. Like, I'm trying to find the one um, that was one person I was going to mention. Oh, AV Club Screen Rant. Um, is yeah, on here. We have we have an article up. From yeah, there and, and it's like you know, and then down here we have you know, like okay, like it's Caitlin Booth, bleeding cool. Yeah, she gave. She's like, it's better than the theatrical cut, but the first half wasn't so slow. The second half could have been a triumph. And then going on about how it's a four-hour bloated mess and doesn't like it. Well, she wasn't gonna like it anyway, guys. She's one of the ones putting out parts of your fan base are toxic, Zach, and you need to own that. Why is it his fault? Because it's, he, these, these people are so tired of anybody like not agreeing with their narrative being considered toxic fans. And I'm sorry, fans campaigning for things doesn't make them toxic. No, uh, it just they're showing the studios what they want. And the difference between the Snyder Cut fans and say like Shira stands 
is that the Snyder Cut fans were actually willing to put their money where their mouths were. They were taking out, you know, billboards and doing mm -hmm. all this crazy stuff. And you've got the Shearer stands are like, quick, let's get it trending, but let's not buy the toys when they're out. Quick, let's get it trending. And anybody who doesn't agree with us are automatically going to be labeled and ridiculed and mocked and bullied and threatened because they don't agree with us. And, you know, and but it's interesting because these reviewers, if you look at the, at the, the sites they're from, um, a lot of the sites that gave it negative reviews also mm. have done hit pieces about toxic fans. Yep. So this this machine has, is uh, definitely going to fire up uh, this week, I think. And there are some other things that are rubbing people the wrong way. Yeah, go ahead. You can talk about this. I'm not familiar with this. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver got a shout out. Uh, he got a shout out because I guess something he did on Flash years ago uh, wound up in the movie, and because of that, you know, he got he got credit right up. As did a lot of these people. Yeah, as did Gail Simone. I saw that. Yes. Um, the problematic Jeff Johns that uh, Ray Fisher had a problem with, they still gave him a shout out. So, uh, yeah, very very interesting. Uh, I know on Twitter people were losing their shit because he he got his name in the credits. Yeah, this is a funny little thing that you might not understand if you're a self-absorbed moron. Um, if people use your your work, they have to usually credit you. Uh, it's kind of contractual a lot of times, or they can get sued. So even if they don't like somebody's political opinion or their videos or whatever, if they use their work, they still have to give them credit. That's how it works in the real world when you put your big people pants on and you go out there and deal with society and not just Twitter. Well, that's why you have to cancel everything Harry Potter so J.K. Rowling doesn't get any more money. Stop buying any Harry Potter stuff or but, buy it secondhand after somebody else buys it and gives her money. Right. And, and, you know, a lot <laughs> of this this bullshit is it, it's hilarious because it's all, you know, if they had to actually go out in the real world, I'd love to see them try to pull this crap in the real world because that's not how it works. Um, but no, anyway. it is not. No, it is not. So, uh, before we get into it any further. Oh, too late. We're almost done with it. We're already. <laughs> we're just subscribe. Gonna, hey. Please subscribe. We got to talk, talk about pop culture, talk about comics, talk about animation, talk about movies. And yeah, we're going to see a lot of this. Now, um, I don't even want to go into this whole thing because this is just some. But I mean, you don't have to. I'm just saying that if you look, this is just the last. If you go to the first, the first thing again, the first window. This is just the last 24 hours. That it's just all these things coming out. That like they have toxic fans. They're doing the reviews for the movie and putting toxic fans in it because they cannot stand that fans, you know, got their way again. We saw the same shit with Alita. We saw the yep. same shit with Sonic, which they just announced that they're starting to, you know, do the, the second Sonic movie. Yeah. You know? uh, now, here's the thing. I don't think there would have been a second Sonic movie had they not listened to the Exactly. Fans. They needed to, and that made it better for it. Yeah, because Sonic was actually, I mean, it wasn't the greatest movie ever made, but the fact that they were willing to change his design to and make him actually look like and Sonic admit the that they did it wrong and then yeah. you know what they did that they got so many people showing up i think like, i wouldn't ever even really, really watch this movie but i'm here because you listen to the fans mm -hmm. and now they're getting a second movie we went um first showing opening night mm -hmm. to sonic to show support because normally i would have been like ah, i'll just wait for it on on blu-ray or you know voodoo or whatever but we're like, no, you know what? They listen. They're getting our money. We're going to go to the theater. We're going to make a, mm -hmm. a night out of it. And that's what we did. And it was the last movie we saw in theaters. It was, yeah. It was Sonic the Hedgehog. It was the last movie a lot of people saw in theaters. You know, but um, yeah, so there was a sequel because they listened. We well, also kick Birds of Prey's ass. I want to point that out. Legitimately. But you, ne but you yeah. never hear that. No, you don't. Uh, now, here's the thing about you know Justice League. And, and there is talk that there could potentially be sequels. To Justice League, if the Snyder Cut does well. So we want to stop that so we can, you know, say, uh, if toxic fans shouldn't get their own way. Toxic fans. And Henry and, Cavill's got to be canceled because he dated Gina Carano. And, and Snyder shouldn't get his own way either because he listened to toxic fans and defended them. So he needs to be canceled because, you know. But, I mean, it's getting old, guys. We had shit like this just a couple of years ago with Alita. Like, if you supported Alita, you liked Alita. Which, again, uh, had a, a Latina lead, by the way you know, strong female character. If you supported this movie, you were an alt-right Yahtzee. Automatically. Whether you were or not doesn't, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's the Mary Sue. That explains everything. I love how the Mary Sue generalizes, but then they yell, then they yell at people generalizing when they like generalize more than like anybody. Um, and you know what made me mad as a woman? And this is funny because this is a Mary Sue, so we're going to have a moment. Hey, uh, I, I'm talking to Mary Sue and the other websites like this that, that you know, kept trying to pit Captain Marvel against Alita. Um, I'm going to call you all sexist, you know, because here's the thing. 
if you really truly wanted women to be seen and you really truly wanted women to be out there more and you thought we were being kept back, you had two, two, not one, two female-led action movies at the same time, which was a win for women, especially in the action film genre. We had a huge win, but instead you spent your time instead of talking about the main point, which is we have a huge win here was, well, people aren't, aren't you know, embracing Captain Marvel, which is, you know, by the comics, the, the, you know, inclusive darling, because they're watching Alita and Alita's got boobs and yucky, 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 even though Captain Marvel did too. And it's all men. It's all men because they're not liking Captain Marvel. You know, the funny thing about Alita, and we could, we could bring this up is that her, her spoiler, by the way. Her second body was actually uh, kind of gender neutral. She's the one who gave it boobs. No, that's what they're mad about. Because the director, you know, but she looked like the character in the comic. Yes. But the thing is, the point is, it doesn't matter about any of that. The point was, the what the real news should have been was it's a win for women. We're winning. We got two blockbuster, big, female-led action films in the theater at once. But sites like the Mary Sue, these other people decided to, to, you know, try to say, well, one was outright for men. And they completely, completely shot down the one thing that we should have been excited about as women. Yeah. And it's like, so you don't get to call yourself the Mary Sue and feminist. Bullshit. Because if you were truly feminist about women power and about women, then you would have seen that, oh, we have a win here. We have a real win with two female-led action food movies at the same time. But no, no, we were, you don't like my Captain Marvel. Stop giving me your hot takes about Captain Marvel because Captain Marvel's the best is because in the comics, she's this checkbox, that checkbox, every checkbox under the sun. So that means she's the best. And when people didn't like, you know, Brie Larson's bullshit, you turned around and, and, and you sacrificed Alita for it because they liked that movie. You, you, you're so stupid it hurts. All of you people that use that narrative, and if you say, and you're, I'm a feminist, no, you're not. <sighs> Another news, Gen X would very much like to be left out of these meaningless cancel culture conversations. That's yeah. true. And the fact that we think the cancel culture is stupid. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's another thing I saw on Twitter too. Gen X is our hope. Gen X says, fuck you. No, Gen X doesn't say fuck you. Gen X is around for the PC movement. We thought that was stupid too. Yes, we did. Uh, we did. We lived through all that. We we lived through many, many moral moral panics. Ten to one, the person who read that article isn't even Gen X. Probably not. Probably not. It's the Mary Sue. Anyway, uh, expect it uh, to come in, uh, come hot and heavy in the next uh, couple of weeks as I think the Snyder Cut is going to be demonized, dragged. Uh, at the end of the day, all that matters to HBO and Warner is how many people watched it. Yeah, that's all they're going to care about. That's like, all they you care know, about. Because you know, money talks and it's something successful. That's what matters. Because, you know, that's how it should be. That, that's how it used to be. That's how back, it, yeah. Until back it, in yeah. our day, back in the, the 80s with the Gen Xers, it was basically if there was money to be made, there were sequels made. No money, no movies. Mm -hmm. Going to wrap it up? Yep. Okay, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.